All right, another Detroit Lions player who has been in the organization, who has been in the practice facility, is raving about the Detroit Lions. Now, I'm not going to lie. This isn't like an all-star player here. This isn't a former all-pro or anything like that. In fact, it was a guy who came here, and he was here for two and a half weeks, 17 days. 17 days. And his name is Josh Dobbs. He is a quarterback. If you remember, Josh Dobbs is a guy that we picked up and we picked him up because Boyle was poached from our practice squad. So Boyle's poached from our practice squad. We get Josh Dobbs in um, kind of like that emergency backup quarterback, backup to the backup quarterback, just in case we need him. Um, and we had him there on our practice squad. Later, he went to the Titans and ended up starting for them, I believe, in the final week of the season. But let's take a look at what he had to say, because and me and Chris have talked about this on this channel. It is so great hearing people talk good about the Detroit Lions. So we are going to just keep reading these over and over and over. So I guess I was wrong. It says he was a fan or he was on the team for 16 days. Um, but I'm telling you, I thought it was 17. Anyways, um, it made an impression on him. Here's what he'd say. He was asked to compare Vrabel and Campbell. Um, and he'd say, I would say they're both up there because they played. Dobbs said they get it. The ebbs and flows of a season, the emotions of it. As players, I came in for practice on Wednesday late in the season. They just get it. They walk in the room and just get it. Do you think he thinks they get it, by the way? Um, he said he was cool. The culture up there was awesome. That's talking about the Lions. Their culture up there was awesome. I was really impressed. So, so he's impressed, but he didn't stop there. He said, I was there the night before the Vikings game, and you could just feel the vibe in the building, Stab said. Just everyone around there, they're just all focused on the right things. Pause, let's talk about that. They're all focused on the right things. Oh my goodness, do I love that. And you don't go eight and two over the final 10 games unless you're focused on the right things. That means they're not messing around. That means they're, they're worried about football. They're worried about football. And so when, when you have a team that's worried about football and winning games, then your focus is in the correct spot. It seems simple, but it's what it is. They're just focused on the right things. They have a ton of coaches that are former players on their whole staff. They just get it. The vibe is really good up there. I enjoyed it. So here's the thing about Dobbs. Hey, Maybe he's trying to come back, right? But I mean, he wouldn't be trying to come back unless he really liked it up here. And I think this is something common that you're hearing. You've seen players come out and thank Brad Holmes uh, for drafting them. You've seen players come out that are that are on the Lions team saying, I want to be back here. Multiple players. Not, not the simple, you know, hey, you know, it's contract year. We'll see what happens. Um, I would love to be back. Uh, you know, obviously love the people of Detroit. That's usually the answer a player gives. No, it's the answer of, hmm, let me see. Um, I had my best year as a running back here. And uh, yeah, I think I would like to be back. Like I'm, they love me here. I love it here. They put me in a position for to succeed. I want to come back. Kaminsky was flat out talking about how he wanted to come back. Like it wasn't even mincing words. So we're going to keep talking about this because as long as this culture is good and you can give me the argument all you want. I think some people would adhere to the belief that culture in the NFL doesn't matter like it does in college football. I say pooey on that. Like, seriously, I don't know how else to say it. And you can sit here and say, well, what about the New England Patriots? Everybody talks about the Patriot way and how that sucks. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't suck when you're winning, what, six Super Bowls in 15 years or something like that. that that's not a sucky culture. People enjoy winning. So that's a good culture. It's just not the only way to go about it. Tennessee, the Titans. So Dobbs was comparing, you know, asked to compare both coaches and he was talking good about the Titans coaches as well. But the Titans seem to overachieve every single year. Uh, and then this year, you know, after losing quarterback and uh, it, it was a struggle for them and Willie Willis clearly wasn't ready, but that's because they have a different culture full. Like Vrabel is running a great thing there. It's a great thing as a former player. Uh, the Detroit Lions are starting to have the same idea. I'm telling you right now, 
Think about your work experience. Think about it. I understand they're playing football. I understand they're playing football, and football is a wonderful game, and it's a ton of fun to play. But think about your work experience. Are you more productive when you're having fun or when it's all business all the time? There has to be a level of enjoyment in order to do your best work. There has to be a level of fulfillment, uh, an idea that you're striving toward a common goal, the idea, and there has to be a level of teamwork or camaraderie, or, you know, I would die for the guy next to me. That's not just football. That's any job. You know, even as I go to work at the church, like, if I know the other guys that are there and gals have my back, I'm more likely to have theirs. And the same thing happens on the football field. If you practice well, if you hold everybody accountable so that when you do your job on the field, you know the guy next to you is going to do his job and a good thing is going to happen. I think about that game against the Bears in week 17 when we just throttled them. It was the best defensive performance I've seen all year. And it was because everybody did their job. Everybody was held accountable. The team got better throughout the year. And then to be able to have that culture, to be able to have that level of excitement when you have rookies and second-year players galore that are contributing on this team is absolutely remarkable. Like, usually you need those veteran dudes that are leading the charge. And you got some of them in there. You know, you got Decker, you got rag. Now you got golf, you got shark, right? That's on the offensive side of the ball on the defensive side of the ball. You got bugs. You got Kaminsky to an extent, right? You've got Anzalone. You had Tracy Walker. So there are some guys, but even those, it's not like they're year eight, nine, 10 guys, except Decker. They're like your three, four, five, six guys. And I think that's one of the things that's so great about this team is that there's veteran leadership with youth. So from the coaching staff down, they get it. And I think that's one of the beauties, what you can talk about when you talk about uh, coaches who are former players. They can be the veteran leaders to an extent. I'm not saying you don't need veteran players. You do. But if you have coaches that have been there that have done that, it's easier for the players to listen and follow and get in line because they almost view them as a veteran player type presence. They just know more because they're spending all their time coaching. It's really cool. It's a fun, positive environment. I just hope it keeps going as a fan. Hopes are high. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already. Do it.